In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to add the gems on to one of these beautiful diamond paintings. Um, and I want to go through the basics of it. Most of this one has been done and Sam has done most of this one for me. He really enjoys doing these. Um, so with as with the card kit, you're going to receive all of the gems that you need. So you're going to get a strip with all of the gems that you actually need colour coded. You're going to get a tray, a pickup tool and again the wax. So what we're going to do is just start the pickup tool first. So I'm going to take the wax, peel back the paper and I'm just going to push my into it so that it picks up the wax inside. And this was what makes the tool actually sticky to pick up the gems. Now, if you can see down the side here, you've actually got comparison table and it's actually listed on each individual one. And this tells you what the actual gem colours are and what actually matches in there with it. So this is the hummingbird and we can see here the bit that's not been done has got the J's and the E's and the A's. So it's all coded actually onto the canvas. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start with, let's have a look here. Let's start with the J. Now I'm finding it quite difficult to see and that's where the light box comes in really, really handy. If I turn the light box on and I keep the button pressed, then it gets the intensity of the light to the maximum. And that way, all of these little white letters are far more visible. I hope that comes across, but to me here, these are a lot more visible. I can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take, here we go. We want to, we're looking for J. So we've already sorted these ones out. And this is J, 22J as marked on the packet. So this is the one I'm going to use. And you'll actually find as well, you've got a colour code by the side of this. It tells you, so 22 is J and it would be 939 in colours. So I'm going to add them all into here. Give the tray a shake. And as you can see, as I shake it, a lot of the actual gems fall flat on their back. So they're easy for pick up. So we simply take the tool. I'm going to peel back a little bit of the adhesive sheet, keeping some in place. And we're just going to pick up the gem and I'm going to place it against the J mark. So if you've seen the card kit, the card kit has numbers. This has letters. So you can see there I've got three in the J. The next line is J, J, J and J. Then it moves to E. So I want to stop. I don't want to add any more J's to that. And I find it easier to add all of one colour first. So rather than changing colours in the middle, I'm going to add all of the J's on and then we will move on to the E, which we'll see in a second. Right, so I've put all of the J's in. So now I'm going to move to the next colour, which is E, which again is marked down here. So we have a look down and find our E, which is number 12, 12 E. So again, I'm going to add these to the tray. And again, give it a shake and you'll see most of them will fall flat. The more you shake it, the flatter they go. Peel back the paper. And we're just going to then pick up an E. And you'll see what happens is the way these have been made is that the color subtly changes. So we had a very dark blue, which was J. This E color is a slightly lighter colour. I think there must be thousands of shades in this because they really pick up all the beautiful colours that you get in the original pictures. But I'm just going down now and putting all of the E's in. It really is very easy. So we'll go in, I'll do another row of E. So we get E, E, and then we run to an A, so I leave that. We'll go and pick up another one. So I've got an E an E, an E, then we go to A, but check the row, because there's another E there, there's another E there, so it's easier to do each colour at a time, and I find easier to do a row, I know that's what Sam does when he's doing them, then we go to an E, and there's another E there, and I'll carry on with the E's, and we'll come back in a few minutes, and we'll add the next colour in. 
So I've got all of the next colour in, which was the E, and now we're on to the A, which again is a lighter colour. The chart at the side tells you which one it is. It's on the packet, so I'm just going to tip these all out. And again, give the tray a shake to flatten the gems off, peel it off. And you can see here, I've got a really nice section where it goes lighter. So the first colour that I put on was a very dark blue. The next colour was a sort of mid to dark. This one is quite a nice sort of cobalty blue colour. And this is how the images are made up of actual different colours, different shades in different areas. Very similar to how pictures are made with pixels. These are just made with slightly larger pixels. So we'll drop in the A's. Let's give that a shape just to get them flat on their back again. So anytime that happens, just give the tray a really light shake. So we'll pop the A's in. And I will then just finish this one off and show you the finished product. So I've added the last colour into this one. So the last colour on this one was 7B. So again, 7 and marked there as B. And you can see that I've got that all go through in the tail section that I've actually finished. Just lost one off there. Let's pop that back on. The tail section that I finished is all in the blue. So all you need to do is make sure you give it a good press down. Use the actual carrier sheet and make sure that you've got all your gems well pressed down. You can seal it when it's finished. And I'm just going to turn the light box off so that hopefully we can see the colour come through and you can there see all the gems. So how beautiful that hummingbird looks all completed. And a picture like this without the backing, with a beautiful photography backing, should only take you a few hours. It's not a full painting. This is a great one to start on. The hummingbird is a beautiful image and it's a great one to get started with.